I'm Dave Bennett, the radio voice of Wildcat football and men's basketball. It's my honor to be your master of ceremonies here tonight. At this time, we would like to ask our previous Hall of Fame inductees who are with us to stand and be recognized. At this time, please turn your attention to the video board for a brief message from the new Comb Family Vice President for Athletics and Recreation, Mark Jackson. Hello, everyone, and welcome to tonight's 2024 Hall of Fame induction. Unfortunately, responsibilities here in Philadelphia do not allow me to be with you all. I wish I was. This is an incredibly important night in our community in the celebration of these wonderful Wildcat student athletes. You have given so much to Northwestern and we wanna thank you, commend you, celebrate you. I can't wait to meet all of you personally. Uh, we know how well you represented that Northwestern across your chest and we take incredible pride in representing you the way we play today. Doors are always open, cannot wait to meet you. Enjoy each other tonight, celebrate this, and as always, go Cats. And now, please welcome to the stage Interim Senior Deputy Director of Athletics, Pat Goss. Good evening, good evening. Uh, as you saw there, I know Mark really wishes he could be here. It's, it's been interesting being with him as he got started here. The Hall of Fame is something he has already talked about a lot. It means a lot to him, the ability to honor our past and celebrate these incredible successes. But I'm honored to be, ha honored to be here on behalf of Mark Jackson. I'm also honored to be here on behalf of the athletic department, the university, President Schill. But I'm mostly honored to be here as a fellow Northwestern student athlete to celebrate this deserved group of honorees. So my background, a lot of you, you may remember me a little bit as the golf coach, but I started here, I was a student athlete. I graduated in 1992. I became the assistant golf coach right after school, not long after, so I've spent my whole adult life here at Northwestern University. But then I went on to become the head men's coach, uh, golf coach in 1997, the director of golf in 2007 when we merged our golf programs and, and put both of those together. Uh, and then recently I got a call from the president on June 20th and was asked to serve as the interim athletic director starting July 1st through the rest of this month. So you're almost done with me, but, but not quite. I still got to do the Hall of Fame, which I'm incredibly happy to be here for. Like, like everybody here, I, I love Northwestern and I would serve this university in any way. Um, some things I've learned the past 32 years since I graduated from Northwestern is that being a student athlete at Northwestern and being a Northwestern, Northwestern alum is special. It has incredible value. I have seen the impact that this university has made on our student athletes, uh, including our student athletes are here tonight, and I've seen the impact that the coaches who are here tonight made on those student athletes. It's been profound. I've also witnessed how the degree, the network, and the relationships have served all of us alums in such good stead from the time we graduated. Now tonight is really about looking back and celebrating these incredible athletes and their accomplishments and the way they represented the university, but it is also a time to look forward. And obviously having Mark share that message with us was a, a good segue to the exciting times we have coming ahead with Mark Jackson at, at Athletic Director. Um, you know, I, I've learned a lot. I've really gotten, it's been fun. I spent all these years coaching, I know, you know, we've got so many former coaches here that I coached with and uh, they all feel like I defected and I went to administration on them. But I promise I'm still here representing coaches all the time. But this is also a time for us to look forwards. It's also, as we look back, we need to look forwards. And I've learned a lot about the future in the last two and a half months. And it is further affirmed for me what an incredible place Northwestern University and our athletic department is. Uh, you know, of all the times in my career that I could have been asked to be interim athletic director, I had 27 years they could have asked me, but somehow they managed to ask me at a time that we were building a new incredible stadium here at Ryan Field, but also at a time that we decided to build a temporary stadium on the Lakeville in 70 days. And for those of you, I know most of you are going tomorrow, 
it's incredible. It's a memorable experience. I'm excited for everyone to be here tomorrow and to see these honorees out on the field. But it, it was also a time when we were going through the most, probably arguably the most pivotal time in the history of college sports and change is coming. And the one thing I can promise you is that Northwestern is going to do it differently and we are gonna do it by our mission and values which are unique in the college athletics world. But now we've got an exciting future but let's look back and let's celebrate our, our honorees and all that they have accomplished. You know, I was very fortunate. I had the opportunity to be coaching when everybody here wore the purple and representing the purple. So it really means a lot to have this group who I watched compete and coach all those years. But thank you to everyone for being here tonight. To see the community come together and represent these great accomplishments really means a lot. It's very important for us to honor and celebrate our past, and this incredible group of successes. Jeff, Nia, Meredith, Ellen, Jay, Tyler, Kate, Paul, and Chris, congratulations. Everybody that came after you, they stand on your shoulders. You have made an incredible impact on this university and athletic department. And on behalf of that department, I can't thank you enough for representing Northwestern University and Northwestern Athletics at the highest level. Thank you for being here and go Cats. All right, thank you, Pat. All right, I think it's time to induct our honorees, and our first inductee tonight is Jeff Budzine. A two-time first-team All-Big Ten selection, two-time Big Ten Kicker of the Year, and a 2013 first-team All-American, Jeff Budzine graduated as Northwestern's career record holder for points, field goal percentage, and field goals made in a season. But Zine remains the most accurate kicker in Big Ten history among kickers with at least 50 career attempts. His breakout season came in 2012 when he became NU's first first-team All-Big Ten kicker since 1997 and was named a national semifinalist for the Lou Groza Award. But Zine was 19 for 20 in field goal attempts setting the NU single season record, making 95% of his field goal attempts. As a senior in 2013, Budzine repeated as both Big Ten Kicker of the Year and as a first team all Big Ten selection and was named a first team all American. Wildcats, please welcome to the Athletic Hall of Fame from Northwestern football, Number 37, Jeff Budzine. seems like every university's athletic department uses the we are a family cliche, but here at Northwestern it is the truth. Northwestern saw some of the best moments of my life, like when Coach Fitzgerald offered me a full ride scholarship in the Nicolette Football Complex on November 22, 2008, before they went on to crush Illinois 27 to 10. I remember sitting at my mailbox in Heartland, Wisconsin, waiting for the mailman to deliver the scholarship letter, and I committed immediately after opening it or my first college field goal, a 43-yard field goal on the left pass at Boston College, where I was so nervous I had to ask the holder on the sidelines after the kick if I made it. White pants were risky that day. <laughs> or beating Mississippi State in the 2013 Gator Bowl, our first bowl win since 1949. Or lastly, getting engaged to the love of my life, Kaylee, on New Year's Eve of my senior year. 
Northwestern also saw some of the worst moments of my life, like in 2012 when I missed a game-winning field goal against Nebraska in full of a sellout Ryan Field crowd. However, that being the worst day of my college experience only lasted 36 hours, because the next Monday morning in class at Anderson Hall while we waited for class to start, the professor innocently asked the students how our weekends were. We went around the room until the student directly in front of me shares that she's a Nebraskan, born and bred, and the first person in her family in three generations to not go to the University of Nebraska. She went on to say that her entire family took a coach bus from Lincoln, Nebraska up to Evanston to watch us play, and she was so excited to beat Nebraska and rub it in her family's face. She was, and I quote, having an incredible weekend with my family, tailgating and watching Northwestern play until our dumb kicker missed that game-winning field goal. <laughs> After that game, while my entire family went out to celebrate, I walked back to my dorm room in tears. I could share hundreds of names of people and accompanying stories that made my Northwestern experience so positive, but since Northwestern only gave me 30 minutes for the speech, I'll be brief. <laughs> Coach Fitzgerald and Coach Hankwitz, thank you for believing in a 148-pound kicker at Arrowhead High School, enough to offer a scholarship to this prestigious university. I'm sure there are times when you doubted me, especially during my abysmal fall camp freshman year, but you never showed it. Instead, your encouragement, coaching, and belief in me led to my total overachievement. To the best holder and snapper in Big Ten history, Brandon Williams and Pat Hickey, we arrived together at Northwestern in August of 2009, and over the course of five years as teammates, I estimate that we kicked over 15,000 field goals together. I cannot recall one bad snap or one bad hold. Your consistency, execution, and most importantly, friendship is why I'm on the stage right now. To my mom and dad who provided the most love and support regardless if the kick was good. You helped me prioritize faith and family. It was easy to be successful with a support network like mine. When I quit soccer freshman year of high school to focus on kicking footballs, I never heard about the time or monetary investment that was now wasted. No, you supported me fully in my new journey and set a great example of how I want to be as a parent. To my brother and sister who both went to the University of Wisconsin-Madison but still bleed purple, John in particular, your loving support, driving me around the country to kicking camps and college visits are memories I'll never forget. To my three beautiful children, thank you. And you may be asking, why am I thanking my kids? Because they weren't even alive during my playing career. And to that, I'd say, you're right. I was able to eat, sleep, and train whenever I needed to. And last, my beautiful wife, Kaylee. High school sweethearts and celebrating our 10-year anniversary next year. And what a great moment we just had when Coach Michael Moynihan of Northwestern Women's Soccer offered our six-year-old daughter a full-ride scholarship. <laughs> Coach, thank you. Seriously, Kaylee, I had the ultimate rock to lean on during my career. How many kickers had girlfriends that knew how to calculate hang time, never complained about shagging field goals, and let me train as seriously as I did? I guess you could say I'll kick my coverage. That joke sucked. <laughs> <laughs> but you are a Hall of Fame wife and mom. I am blessed to have made a lot of kicks at Northwestern. I was the beneficiary of great offense and a coaching staff that truly valued special teams. I will never have the time nor the words to thank this university for the role it played in my life. And most telling, the school continues to care for me and treat me like I had never left. Just last week, Coach Braun called me to introduce himself personally, ask about my family, and congratulate me. That was followed by a personal note from our new athletic director, Mark Jackson. That's how special this athletic department is. Northwestern, thank you. Hail to purple, hail to white, hail to the Northwestern. Just, just one quick aside, Jeff worked with us on the radio crew for a few years after his playing days, and the Wildcats were playing at Notre Dame, and Jeff was working the sidelines. We decided we would take a picture of the crew on the field before the game. The security guys very rudely kicked us off the field, kicked a Hall of Famer off the field, and it should be pointed out that we not only won the game, we won it on a field goal in overtime. So, Jeff had the last laugh. 
Our next inductee is Nia Coffey. Only the fifth player in Big Ten history to record career marks of over 2,000 points and 1,000 rebounds, Nia Coffey became the first player in program history to earn first-team All-Big Ten honors all four years as a Wildcat. She holds the program's career record for rebounds, free throws made, and ranks second in points and blocked shots. Coffey earned a number of career accolades and is a two-time Associated Press Honorable Mention All-American and was a unanimous first-team All-Big Ten selection. She was the first player in program history to earn first-team All-Big Ten honors in three straight years. After her illustrious Wildcat career, Coffey became the first Wildcat to be selected in the WNBA draft when she was selected fifth overall in 2017 by the San Antonio Stars, now the Las Vegas Aces. She is currently playing for the Atlanta Dream after one-year stops with the Phoenix Mercury and Los Angeles Sparks. I had the honor of recruiting Nia out of high school in Minnesota, where she was not only Miss Basketball, but a McDonald's All-American, and could have won anywhere in the country. Uh, until she came to one of our tailgates, she said, this is where I want to go to college. And uh, her career uh, was an endless array of, of accolades, but the most important one was you know, her being a great teammate, a captain, a leader, somebody that uh, put us on the map, put us in the top 20 in college basketball, put us in the NCAA tournament, put us in the upper echelon of the Big Ten her whole career. Um, she did it with class and dignity and did it the right way. So I showed up in New York one night and she was drafted in the first round of the WNBA by San Antonio. And, uh, unfortunately, she can't be here tonight because she's playing uh, for the Atlanta Dream, chasing a playoff spot. But uh, I know her heart is here and for anybody that knows Nia, uh, she's gonna keep playing as long as she can. We're just really proud uh, from a women's basketball staff and for all the great players she played with uh, to welcome her back and for her to be in the Hall of Fame. Uh, Well-deserved, Nia. I'm gonna to toast you on that one with your own coffee. As Neos currently still competing with the Atlanta Dream, as Coach said, please direct your attention once again to the video board where she will accept her invitation to the Hall of Fame with a short video message. Hi Northwestern, this is Nia Coffey. It is an honor to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. This moment is very special to me. I never imagined this was a possibility. This achievement reflects the support of so many. To my family, your love and encouragement uplifted me on the tough days. To my teammates, our unity and hard work defined our accomplishments. To my coaches, your guidance shaped my journey. And to my incredible academic advisor, your wisdom and support were invaluable. To the amazing Northwestern community, your cheers and support fueled our success. Thank you for making this possible. Go Cats. Our next inductee is Meredith Frank. One of the most decorated players in program history, Meredith Frank earned three All-America honors and led the Wildcats to four straight national championships in her career. In 2007, she garnered first-team All-America honors and helped Northwestern set then-NCAA single-season records in goals, assists, and points for a single season. She started in 85 games during her career and helped the Wildcats win four consecutive national championships, compiling a career record of 85 and three. The 2006 American Lacrosse Conference Rookie of the Year, Frank won four all ALC awards, one for each year of her career. In 2007, Frank earned ALC Championship All Tournament Team recognition. She twice was nominated for the Tawaritan Award, awarded annually to the top female and top male college lacrosse players in the country. Please join me in welcoming to the Athletic Hall of Fame from Northwestern Lacrosse, Meredith Frank.
Good evening, everyone. I am deeply honored and humbled to stand before you tonight as an inductee into the Northwestern University Athletics Hall of Fame. Being recognized alongside these other inductees and joining such a remarkable group of athletes is certainly a dream come true, and I want to express my sincere thanks to the Hall of Fame committee for this incredible honor. I know it's cliche to say, but my experience at, as a student athlete at Northwestern changed my life forever, and I can pinpoint the exact moment that it did. The date was February 19, 2007. Two days prior, I had opened my sophomore season against North Carolina, and our team suffered a loss in overtime. On Monday, February 19th, Coach Kelly sent me a text and requested a meeting. I'm not sure what I was expecting, but I'm also not sure that Monday meetings were ever good. Kelly took out her computer and she showed me film of our, excuse me, our offense from overtime. The clip was of me dodging down to goal on the right side of the eight meter. In the film, I neglected to shoot the ball. I ran behind the goal and I passed it off to a teammate. That's where she paused the film. I was confused. What had I had done wrong? Why wasn't that the correct play? I didn't think I had an angle to shoot, so I moved the ball behind the net. Makes perfect sense in my mind. Kelly articulated that that was my opportunity. That was my moment. That was my lane to goal. That was my shot to shoot. She said by not shooting, I was being selfish. Now she really lost me. Selfish for playing it safe? Exactly. In that moment, Kelly taught me that in order to be the best teammate, you had to take chances. In order to be a great player, you had to make mistakes. And in order to be a champion, you had to risk failure. I'm sure everyone is familiar with Wayne Gretzky's famous adage, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Well, that was Kelly's message, and it was received loud and clear. Don't shy away from success. Taking risks is the only way to be great, and don't fear failure. If you're gonna go down, go down giving it your everything. Fast forward to the final four in Towson, my senior year against the University of Pennsylvania, I distinctly remember acknowledging that meeting and said to myself, if I get the ball, I've got to shoot my shot. My teammate Hannah passed it to me and the rest is history. To Kelly and Scott, thank you for giving me the opportunity to be a part of the Northwestern lacrosse family. Thank you for providing me a space to make mistakes and to embrace new challenges. Thank you for recognizing my potential before I ever did. Thank you for surrounding me with the most knowledgeable and passionate coaching, coaches and support staff. Lex, Acacia, Lindsay, Annie were an unbelievable compliment to your knowledge, ingenuity, and passion. Thank you for your constant compassion and your unwavering belief in me. To my mom and dad, thank you for providing me with every opportunity to grow and develop as a lacrosse player. Girls lacrosse did not exist in my town until my mother took over the youth program. The high school team wasn't competitive until my mother took over as varsity coach. And my opportunity for exposure at a club level was not possible until my mother created the first girls lacrosse program in Massachusetts. <laughs> and without my father, my mother certainly wouldn't be able to accomplish all of this. So to my mom and my dad, my brother and my sister, Thank you for supporting me relentlessly and allowing me to pursue my passion so aggressively. Thank you, for thank you for supporting me relentlessly. Thank you for following me wherever lacrosse took us. Thank you for always being my harshest critics and my biggest fans. Thank you for my teammates who always accepted me for who I was and inspired me to be better than I ever thought I could be. My teammates thrived in competition. I was amongst those who loved the complexity of losing as much as the pursuit of winning. To Morgan, Megan, Alex, and all of my Northwestern teammates, thank you for giving me the motivation to compete, the confidence to succeed, but most importantly, the courage to risk failure. I was blessed to play alongside my sister for one year at Northwestern. I am humbled that two of my cousins also made Northwestern their home, and a third will be a member of the class of 2029. To Alex, L, Jane, and Reese, thank you for allowing me to continue to be a part of the Northwestern Lacrosse family by becoming Wildcats. Thank you for sharing my dream and donning the purple so proudly. To my aunts, my uncles, my best friends, thank you for traveling hundreds of miles to support me. Your presence at games near and far was more than I could ever ask for. 
You were the best super fans. Your relentless encouragement and unparalleled enthusiasm made the journey worth it. And finally, to my husband, thank you for embracing my Northwestern Lacrosse family as fiercely as you do. Thank you for always celebrating Memorial Day wherever the cats are playing. Thank you for memorizing the cat schedule and conceding TV programming to me every spring so we don't miss a game. And thank you for only ever showering me th with compliments and never recognizing bad games. To my children and to my nieces, thank you for wearing the end cat so proudly. And I hope for you as you find a passion that challenges you and a desire that motivates you and that you become a part of a family that believes in you. Remember that dedication and hard work can turn dreams into reality. In closing, I want to thank everyone for this incredible honor. Thank you for allowing me to part, be part of this amazing legacy. I'm forever a wildcat, and I will forever bleed purple. Go cats. Thank you, Meredith. Our next honoree is Ellen Grigg. Ellen Grigg was a two-time All-American and NCAA Championships qualifier who at one point held all three Northwestern individual distance freestyle school records. Grigg qualified for the NCAA Championships in her freshman season and shattered her own school record in the 500 free to win her first Team All-America honor in the event. She also swam with a school record-breaking 800 free relay in 2008 helping Northwestern finish 19th in the country. She earned her way back to the NCAA Championships once again in 2009, re-breaking her own school record in the 500 free at the national meet. In addition, she shattered two school records with a single swim on her way to a top 20 national finish in the mile that year, lowering both the 1,000 and 1,650 freestyle NU marks during the NCAA meet. Please welcome to the Athletic Hall of Fame for Northwestern Women's Swimming, Ellen Gray. Um, I would like to spend most of my time today thanking my teammates, two of whom are in the audience. And selfishly, I feel like Meredith read my speech and it took all my themes and improved them. Um, as I was looking at colleges, Northwestern was my wild card pick. It was in the Midwest. I'm from the South. My whole family is in the South. Um, it's in a big city. I like to camp. I like to be in the wilderness. And it's a Big Ten school it felt very out of my league athletically. As soon as I came to campus for my college visit though, I felt at home. Everyone I met was authentic, committed to excellence, they were kind, they were welcoming, they were curious, and lest I make them sound too nerdy, they were also fun and fun to be around. Uh, two of those folks are in the audience today, Cassia and Andrea, and I'm so grateful they're here. Um, after all of my other college visits, I would come home and I'd think that was fine, but I'm just not sure. And after my Northwestern visit, I knew this is where I needed to be. Um, my four years here really proved that that was the right decision. I was surrounded by people from all over the country, from different backgrounds, with different goals, different interests, and that helped me realize there were so many more paths available to me in life than I had ever thought were possible. I shared a goal with people who were highly driven, competitive, and focused on excellence, and that made me both a better swimmer and a better student and so well prepared for life after graduation. I've always said that everything seemed easy after the experience of being a student athlete, and I really think that's true. Finally, my teammates supported me both when I was swimming well, which we've seen, and when I was coming in dead last in dual meets, which was much more common for me. And that really reinforced that there are always gonna be highs and lows in life, and if you find yourself lucky enough to be surrounded by people who support you through both, you're so fortunate and you need to hold on to them. Um, because someone made the mistake of giving me this microphone, I'm talking about my experience, but I think my teammates would say the same thing about Northwestern's impact on their life. My fellow swimmers have gone on to be doctors, 
educators, researchers, campaign managers, parents, scientists, executives, and unless there's an exception that I'm overlooking, everyone I swam with here is doing something really cool and is doing it at a high level of excellence. Each one of them is a credit to Northwestern and reflects the power of the student athlete experience. I'm so honored to be representing them today. I know I'm coming up on my time and JA is eager to get on the stage, uh, but I, <laughs> But being here today has had two things really stand out to me. The first is that I'm so proud of 17-year-old Ellen for taking a risk and getting outside of her comfort zone. The second is that I'm so grateful I found Northwestern, my swimmers, my coaches, who went out of their way to be supportive of me. Coming out of this weekend, I hope to carry those two things forward by pushing myself to keep trying new things and by being a person who supports those around me as they pursue paths that feel fulfilling, exciting, and interesting to them. Thank you again, and go Cats. Thank you, Ellen. Uh, as we continue with tonight's ceremony, we would be remiss not to acknowledge the hard work of this year's Hall of Fame Selection Committee for their time and effort in selecting this year's class and helping to put this wonderful event together. This year's committee is comprised of Kevin Leonard, Monique Holland, Sean Dennison, Daniel Nunez, Lindsay Valdeen, Wesley Berghart, John Boravica, and Alicia Toromoto. Let's give them a round of applause, please. Thank you. Our next inductee is Jay Happ. The first three-time first-team All-Big Ten selection in program history, Jay Happ compiled the best career ERA in Evanston over the last 35 seasons before being drafted by the Philadelphia Phillies in the third round of the 2004 MLB Amateur Draft. Happ led the Big Ten in ERA as a first year and was named an honorable mention collegiate baseball freshman All-American. In his junior season, Happ led the Big Ten with 106 strikeouts, becoming just the second Wildcat in program history with more than 100 strikeouts in a single season. He continues to rank fourth all-time in strikeouts by Wildcat pitcher and holds the program record, winning six Big Ten Pitcher of the Week awards. Happ played for eight different teams throughout his 15-year MLB career, he won a World Series as a member of the Phillies in 2008, and the following season, the left-hander finished second in National League Rookie of the Year voting. He finished sixth in 2016 American League Cy Young voting, compiling a career-best record of 20-4 and four with a 3.18 ERA with the Toronto Blue Jays. Wildcats, please welcome to the Athletic Hall of Fame for Northwestern Baseball, Jay Happ. Congratulations to the fellow inductees tonight, and thank you for the sports department, the athletic department, for the hospitality this evening. Um, when I sat down to think about this honor, all I could think about was all the people that helped me get to Northwestern, succeed here, and succeed in my professional career. So I want to take a few minutes to thank all of them. A lot of them are here tonight. Um, first and foremost, my parents couldn't ask for better role models in life, uh, just the best team I could imagine. My mom always taught me that anything is possible with the right mindset. My dad was my first coach, and I was not easy to deal with. And I think he saw that I had a passion for the game, but I was very emotional. So thank you for cultivating that and having some patience with me. And also, when you didn't have patience, that was good, too, because I definitely deserve it. Uh, I have two older sisters who have consistently encouraged and supported me. Um, they have two amazing families of their own and they continue to do it today. Uh, they're just incredibly supportive of their younger brother and um, I always appreciate that. Uh, 
I have to give a lot of credit to two former Northwestern baseball coaches, Paul Stevens and Tim Stoddard. They kind of took a chance on a small town kid and I'll always be indebted to them for that. I kind of showed up to a, an event that they had, a, a week-long baseball camp they were hosting. I lived two and a half hours away. It was for local kids, but my mom drilled me up two and a half hours each way. I tried to use that as sort of like a tryout to kind of get on their radar. And luckily it worked and they took a chance on me. So like I said, I'll forever be indebted to them. My college roommate when I was here, John Mikert, I think he's here somewhere. Um, he's a great player in his own right. He was maybe the best player I had ever seen to that point. Um, he's a mediocre at best roommate. <laughs> um, but all joking aside, we're gonna, we have a bond for the rest of our lives after being here and after we left. He's the best man in my wedding. A great supporter of my career throughout the years and still today, and we remain great friends. Um, and luck, as luck would have it, two other very important people in my life, my agent Dave Rogers and my advisor Patrick Thompson, both Northwestern graduates, by the way, um, and they're incredibly successful in their careers, but they are even better people and amazing friends. And their advice and guidance over the years are, have been just invaluable to me in order for me to have a peace of mind and know all the options and have success at the highest level. Um, so I thank you. I'm a lucky guy, I have a beautiful wife, Morgan. In fact, can everybody look right here? She's in the light blue. She loves when I do this, she's in the light blue. Um, she's an amazing mother to our three amazing kids. JJ, Bella, and Sloan. I just want to say thank you to, to them for being here and all the support. There's many other teammates um, that made my time here special, too many to name. Um, they sort of say, you become who you surround yourself with. And I think that in my case, 20 years ago, there wasn't a better place to be. I couldn't imagine a better group to surround myself with. Um, and I'm really proud to be a Wildcat. So I'm so grateful to have these family and friends in my life. They are the ones that inspire me to try to be the best version of myself as a son, a brother, father, husband, and a friend. So thank you all. Go Cats. Thank you, Jay. Our next inductee is Tyler Miller. Northwestern's all-time leader in shutouts, Tyler Miller helped lead the Wildcats to a pair of Big Ten regular season titles at a Big Ten tournament championship. In his sophomore season, he played every minute in net and tabbed a pair of shutouts in NCAA tournament play, becoming only the second NU player to record double digits in shutouts in a season. The unanimous Big Ten Goalkeeper of the Year in 2014, he became the first three-time first-team All-Big Ten honoree in program history. Miller was named an All-American in his final season at Northwestern. He became the fifth Wildcat to be drafted into Major League Soccer after graduation. Miller played three seasons with Seattle Sounders FC before being selected by LAFC with the first pick in the 2017 expansion draft. A 2023 MLS All-Star, Miller has played for Seattle, LAFC, Minnesota United, and currently plays for DC United. As Tyler is currently still playing with DC United in the MLS, please once again turn your attention to the video board where he will accept his invitation to the Hall of Fame with a short video message. Hi everyone. First off, I would like to extend my deepest congratulations to all the honorees there. I wish I could be there to celebrate with you, but as you know, sports schedules are often unforgiving when it comes to free time. 
Yet, that is what has led us to this moment for most of us. Sacrifices, dedication, commitment, and persistence to fine-tuning our craft to maximize our careers. There are so many people that were influential in my time there at Northwestern and made it truly special. First off, my coach, Tim Lenahan, who took the opportunity and the chance on me, a small town kid from Woodbury, New Jersey, that was just looking for a chance to prove himself and make it to the pros. And here I am, playing professional soccer, living out my dream, something that never would have been possible if it weren't for Northwestern. To my parents, who constantly supported me growing up, and to Dr. Jim Phillips, my athletic advisor, and all of my other coaches along the way who have helped me and gave me guidance throughout my career there. But mostly to my teammates for all of the memories we shared on and off the pitch that I will never forget and take with me throughout the rest of my life. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend celebrating and as always, go Cats. Our next inductee this evening is Kate Rudkin Groza. Kate Rudkin Groza was a three-time NCAA Championships qualifier and a three-time All-American, earning a career-winning percentage of 85.6%. During her Wildcat career, she was the 2001-02 Midwest Fencing Conference Individual Epe Champion and part of Epe Team Conference Championships in 1999-2000 and 2001-2002 and team championships 1999 to 2000 and 2000 to 01. Rutkin Groza placed third in individual women's epee at the 2002 NCAA championships, her final competition as a collegiate fencer, which was the highest ever finish at the championships by a Northwestern fencer. Rutkin Groza posted top five finishes in three NCAA championships. After graduation, she served in the United States Peace Corps in Uzbekistan and then took a coaching club manager position at the Chicago Athletic Association for several years after returning to the United States in 2005. Kate, congratulations on your admission to the Northwestern Hall of Fame. You are one of the best fencers I've ever had the honor to coach and your achievements in helping us win several conference championships and placing third individually at the NCAAs and Women's Epe has only rarely been uh, uh, duplicated. So glad to see that your career has been honored in this way. I'm sorry I can't be there tonight, but please know that Kathy and I are there in spirit and it is a great honor that you're getting and we're very, very pleased to see you get into the Hall of Fame. Wildcats, please welcome to the Athletic Hall of Fame from Northwestern Fencing, Kate Rudkin Groza. I don't have the same hair anymore. <laughs> I had no idea when this photo was taken that uh, those dreadlocks would be memorialized and seen in this way um, 20 years later. Um, but it, it was pretty fun hair to have when, when I was younger. Um, I am so surprised to be standing here today. It's been quite a while since I was fencing and um, I didn't, know that I would receive a uh, Hall of Fame nomination and didn't even take the email seriously when I first received it. What is this? And then I realized it was real. And then I realized that part of me was so delighted to um, come full circle, come back to Northwestern, um, connect with the time that I spent here and the place. Um, and. I know fencing has come a long way at Northwestern. I recently had a tour at Pat and Jim. It looks amazing. And um, fencing in the United States has also made tremendous progress. Um, gold medal at the Olympics this year, a first. Um, that was something that 
uh, I couldn't dream was possible when I was fencing in the 90s um, and early 2000s. So um, it's wonderful to be recognized. Um, thank you for the committee. Thank you to my coaches, Lori, Ed Kaihatsu. Um, thank you to my coach in Colorado, Gary Copeland, who I fenced with for many years. Um, and thank you to my two teenage sons who um, made the flight from San Francisco to Chicago um, to be here with me today. Um, thank you. Thank you, Kate. And our next inductee this evening is Paul Torricelli. The winningest coach in program history, Paul Torricelli totaled 343 wins and 162 Big Ten Conference victories at the helm of the Northwestern men's tennis team for 24 seasons. He led the Wildcats to nine NCAA tournament appearances, two undefeated seasons in conference play, and a Big Ten championship in 1990 while earning three Big Ten Coach of the Year awards. Two of Torricelli's teams, the 1990 and 1997 squads, advanced to the NCAA Tournament Round of 16. 28 of his players earned all Big Ten recognition and 57 all Big Ten academic selections. Three players earned Big Ten Player of the Year honors. Torricelli was inducted into the Intercollegiate Tennis Hall of Fame in 2009. He's entering his 33rd year at Northwestern, serving as Senior Associate Director for Alumni Relations and Development. Wildcats, please welcome to the Athletic Hall of Fame from Northwestern men's tennis coach, Paul Torricelli. You guys can settle down now. Um, well, first of all, I'd like to thank um, the athletic department and um, the Hall of Fame committee for this incredible honor. Um, I want to thank Alicia too for all the hard work she, she's put in to putting this together. And I'm also like to thank my reading glasses, which I'm going to have to put on in order to read what I what I wrote here. Um, and I want to congratulate an amazing group of athletes, um, not only for the honor, but you've made your former coaches very, very proud. I can assure you of that. And Chris Combe couldn't be here tonight. Um, Chris, uh, the Combe family is responsible for the Combe Indoor Tennis Facility, which is so important to our programs, the men's and women's programs, and we'll always be indebted to Chris. Uh, known as Phase 2 to my players, I'm sure they remember that. Um, being a college coach is all I ever wanted to do, and uh, this incredible university gave me that chance, and I'll forever be indebted. And I think one of the marks of a great university, it gives average, ordinary people a chance to, to build careers and, and livelihoods, and uh, I had that and more. Um, over the last few weeks since I found out about this, I've had the same comment to everybody. It means a lot. And it really does mean a lot. And it means a lot to have so many of my former players here tonight. Um, they become, they be, it was a privilege to coach you guys. You become like my sons. And the highest compliment a coach can get is to have your guys play hard for you. And I had that. And I'll never forget it. Um, it also means a lot to have some of my former assistant coaches here tonight. And um, I cannot tell you how important they were to our program. These were guys that came here with a burning desire to be coaches and worked for nothing. Salaries of $1,500, $2,500, They made it work because they wanted to coach and they, it made everything for me, meant everything. And they've gone on to build great coaching careers of their own and I love those guys. So if your former players are like your sons, your former assistants are like your brothers. Um, one of those is Arvid Swan, our current head coach. Um, 
nobody works harder than Arvid. I'm indebted to what he's done with the program since he took over. And um, I can say this, I think he's the best coach in the program history. I have more wins, but I think Arvid, Arvid is the best coach we've ever had. And I want to thank him for what he's done to this, with this program. Um, I also want to especially thank my daughter, Anna, who's here tonight, and my daughter-in-law, Christine. She's a former scholarship. <laughs> Christine was a scholarship field hockey player. All Anna knew growing up was her dad was a head men's tennis coach. It was a huge part of her childhood. And um, we had a lot of adventures, a lot of highs and lows together. We shared uh, some traumatic. And um, I feel in a very, very important way that I'm sharing this honor with Anna tonight. So thank you, Anna. Love you. I think um, every, co every profession is misunderstood but none more so than, than coaching and college coaching. Everybody's an expert. Everybody thinks they know about athletics and about coaching, but until you've had the privilege of doing it for your livelihood and your career, you, you really don't understand, and the rewards are incredible. Um, if I had one quality, um, it was persistence. Uh, once I decided something was important, I wasn't gonna let go. And I'd mentioned the indoor facility. Uh, we had to have it in order to have a program. Uh, that was the way the, tr the trend was going around the country. Everybody had on-campus indoor facilities. We didn't have one. And I was told, forget it, it's not gonna happen. You'll never make it happen. It's a fantasy, um, you know, give up. And I wouldn't give up. Um, at one point, one athletic director told me, why don't you go somewhere else and get another job? But uh, in 1991, I went to the president of the university and he said, quote, there will never be an athletic facility on the lakefront at Northwestern University. <laughs> and I said, bullshit. <laughs> and here we are today. Um, you know, I, I counted 40 people that made a difference for me on a daily basis in this athletic department. And I know Bob Groseth is here, Jimmy Tierney, our swim coaches, Pat, uh, Tim Lenahan is up there somewhere. Um, Jay mentioned Paul Stevens, our baseball coach. Incredible people uh, that made a difference for me, but I want to single out a few people that really, really were special. Um, my, or my predecessor, Vandy Christie, who resurrected this program, uh, Vandy recommended me, stuck his neck out for me, and he taught me to stick my neck out for my players and my assistant coaches. And I'll never forget that lesson, and I'll forever be indebted to Vandy. Our, our women's tennis coach, current women's tennis coach, Claire Pollard, hardest working coach, most dedicated coach I've ever been around, who will be in this Hall of Fame one day. Uh, Bill Jarvis, our equipment manager, if you knew Jarv, he was an institution. He was the guy you went and, and talked to about your troubles. And um, Miss Jarv, we lost him a few years ago, but he belongs in this Hall of Fame. And um, I'll never forget Jarv, ever. Ken Kraft, who I reported to for many years, our assistant athletic director, former wrestling coach, was the epitome of a gentleman who went from coach to administrator, which is a dying breed. And I'll always be indebted to Ken. Um, Henry Beenan, I don't believe, is here tonight. Um, Henry became our president in, in mid-90s. We were kind of muddling along as an athletic department, and things started to change. Uh, not only did we get a new president, and I think the best president in the history of this university, but we got a tennis-playing gym rat as a, as a president, and things started to change. And again, I'll always be indebted to Henry. And then we had this football coach, Gary Barnett. Um, when this stadium gets done out front, there should be a statue to Gary out in front of that, that stadium. Um, he changed everything for the coaching staff, and he changed the perception of this university, and I'll never forget that. 
Uh, in closing, I mentioned my players are like my sons, but I have a son. And unfortunately, Joe could not be with us tonight, but he was here, if he was here. I tell him how much I love him, how important he is to me, the most important thing in the world. And I wouldn't trade all the wins or awards uh, for him. So I want to thank you again. Uh, this is a privilege and an honor. Go Cats. Thank you, Paul. Our last inductee this evening is Chris Cohn. Christopher B. Cohn is the former chairman and CEO of Cohn Incorporated, a private family held company that manufactures and markets health and personal care products globally that is known for such brands as Just for Men, Vagisil, and C Bond. Cohn joined the Northwestern University Board of Trustees in 1997 and became a life trustee in 2017. He has also served on the Weinberg College of Arts and Sciences Board of Visitors since 1981, the Alumni Admission Council since 1975, and several class reunion committees. Cohn became a co-chair of We Will, the Campaign for Northwestern in 2014. He received the Northwestern Alumni Medal in 2020. Combe is also a major donor for Northwestern Athletics, as well as helping create the Combe Family Tennis Center, which has recently received major renovations and endowed the positions of VP for Athletics and Recreation and Women's Lacrosse Coach. Today, Combe is co-chair of Malaria No More, an organization that works to end malaria-related deaths primarily in Africa and Heart Care International, which provides life-saving heart surgeries for children throughout Latin America. Unfortunately, Chris could not join us this evening due to a death in his family. Please turn your attention to the video board for a short message from a true wildcat. Good evening. I am thrilled, honored, and humbled to be entering the Northwestern University Athletics Hall of Fame with these outstanding true scholar athletes and coaches. I understand that I'm the first player for the freshman tennis team at Northwestern to make the Hall of Fame. Our family connection with Northwestern and tennis began 95 years ago when my father, Ivan Combe, won the Illinois State High School Doubles Championship. A few months later, he entered Northwestern on a full scholarship, one month before the crash of 1929. Here's a photo of my father and his 1930 tennis team that won the first ever Big Ten Championship. My father, Ivan Combe, is on the left, and his coach, Paul Bennett, is on the right. Coach Bennett coached at Northwestern for 27 years from 1929 to 1957. After my father passed away in 2000, then athletic director Rick Taylor came to me and said that they wanted to convert a two tennis court bubble into a six tennis court indoor facility by Ryan Field. I said we would support this project, but we encouraged them to place the tennis courts in the middle of campus, since tennis is a life sport for everyone, from students, faculty, and administration, including then President Henry Beenan, who continues to be an avid tennis player. Tennis is the perfect sport building character and integrity in our student athletes. Because in tennis, there are no referees, you call your own lines. Our Northwestern tennis players have excelled on and off the tennis courts in, as professional tennis players and as leaders in the national organizations of tennis. We are all justifiably proud 
of our athletes and coaches. And I especially am so proud because tennis has been a lifetime sport for me and for so many people. So I wanna thank you once again for this tremendous honor and for supporting Northwestern Tennis. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Well, we would like to now ask all of the honorees to please come back up on the stage for a final group photo. All right, don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere, you have one last assignment and we'd like everybody else to join us as we sing, Go You Northwestern. Go You Northwestern. Thank you. You all sounded great. You got to bring that tomorrow to the football game. And now we would like one more round of applause for our honorees. This concludes the induction ceremony. Please make your way up to the Wilson Club now for the reception and go Cats.